go. Hello, everybody. We're back again. So we, we just couldn't leave that last podcast, and we just ran out of time. So we thought we would actually... Um, rather than leave an open loop, we'll just carry on with that. So we were talking about self-reliance, about not relying on other people, and you need to be re- rely on yourself to be able to do that. Because what does that mean? If you're relying on yourself, you're in control. And as, if that you're in correct. control, you're not stressed. If you depend on others, then you're stressed. And that's hierarchy for you. And they've d- looked at monkeys. So the most the monkey at the top of the hierarchy is the healthiest the monkey at the bottom of the hierarchy is the least healthy and eats the most eats the most yes the least healthy monkey at the bottom of the hierarchy eats the most interesting yeah actually there's one thing my daughter says and uh, i think she learned this from a quite young age it's not even about resources anymore it's about resourcefulness actually a little bit of both because the resources are out there um, I'm not sure every information you'll find on Google is going to be highly accurate but the thing is there a 10 year old can access more high value information than a highly trained specialist could even just 10 years ago yeah but you've got and to be you, careful because you, you don't know the validity you, of that information admittedly, it doesn't mean you're going, to, you're going to learn how to do a brain you know brain surgery and be able to complete it it's the why following you can't day. self-diagnose it's very sometimes it's very dangerous on the internet no but people I get, do I, I get but people lots of patients telling me things and they say oh, I read this I read that but uh, actually people are beginning to realize that they can't trust what they read and so no. I, I get a lot of questions about it now, obviously not we're, we're not medically licensed here but the, the the point is that unless you have the right skill and expertise it's very difficult to interpret what you do read on the internet it, it, it's, and that's what it is it comes down to interpretation I mean we've you know I mean if you look at some people who read the Quran for example they've got very interpret you know very interpretation on what the Quran actually means and some people have a very interpretation on what the Bible means um, and you know and, and and if you don't actually understand it but then again saying that everybody who's also teaching it to you in some ways has their own interpretation because it's in the model of their world in the model of the world that they've grown up in and 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 their character and things like that all these different variables will have a significant impact on how you interpret certain information um, so but the, but, the, but the thing is it and and you can still come to your own conclusions and to certain things look I'm, I'm not going to say is you know particularly on a medical side because it's actually quite a dangerous thing to do and self-diagnose but you go to some gps they will actually still refer to their copy of mims to actually look for a diagnosis yeah, because they based know. on the based on the symptoms that comes from no, ex- that's, that, that comes from experience that comes that's, from ex- that's that com- looking at the precise dose of medication right. to give but the, oh is that right okay mm. great um but but they will look at certain symptoms to do that now, I, I remember going to... I'll give you an example. I, I went to my doctor years ago. Um, I didn't see my... Uh, I, I, and I saw another doctor. Um, and I, I had a pro I couldn't walk. And it turns out that I had a problem with my toe. Now, I thought it was related to rugby and things like this, but I went to the doctor and I couldn't walk. And so he goes, you got gout. And I said, it can't be. I don't... Um, you know, I don't... I, I can't have gout. You know, I don't do anything that should allow me to have gout because on Google it says you drink, you have a lot of rich foods, there's a lot of wine. But the thing is, one, that is genetic. Two, it's a form of arthritis. And three, it can be flared up by, 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 by the, some of the weirdest things. Um, but she actually had to tell me that information. Now, had I Googled it, uh, chances are I'd have probably got it wrong. And the worst thing about going in the wrong direction mm. is about going in the, in the wrong direction enthusiastically. Yes, but well, also, you see, in, in terms of expertise, you have to be careful because even if you go and see a GP, um, now, obviously, GPs don't, aren't psychiatrists, um, and yet GPs are the frontline people that you see. And, and, for instance, the prescription of antidepressants has skyrocketed. It's tripled in the last 20 years or so and and it doesn't mean that everyone getting an antidepressant is clinically depressed but people present feeling depressed but what's really happening is a significant part of those people are unhappy with their lives because western society is not healthy for us but would you would you would you would it be best to describe a gp as a filter 
to then guide you to a more specialist solution? Well, it depends because uh, yes and no because you, you, because they're not just filters they treat a huge amount of people very well and very expertly. But, that, but, but, but they do that they do that on the more general level which is why they're a general practitioner. Yes but, but uh, with, in terms of the say giving antidepressants that's a very specific treatment and the, the, the point to make is that even a even a GP who's a highly trained professional um, may be over prescribing antidepressants a because maybe they're under huge time pressure B because it's much healthier to uh, help treat someone with antidepressants so you don't miss depression because then of course the risk factor is suicide but there's still a huge there's a pressure on GPS which really should be taken by the government the government should take responsibility for social economic change the, the depression epidemic is a socioeconomic problem rather than a medical problem um, and yet there was a, there was a study last year which said that more antidepressants should be prescribed because they do work a lot of the time and who, 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 who's, 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 is that the pharmaceutical industry no it was uh, it, it, I forget which journal it was in but it was a major journal and and that was it was a terrible thing to say of course they do work and of course they're essential in in some people but the major issue is one of socioeconomic change of giving ourselves a stronger national identity of assimilating people of 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 dealing with self-awareness and dealing with loneliness and for instance there's now a minister for loneliness there's a what and sorry there's a minister for loneliness because people know that loneliness is corrosive to mental and physical health and people have even been that there's been hundreds and thousands of people drafted into the nhs to help socialize with you know, it, it, I, I, look, I, I can profess to having been in there myself, but it's easy to go that downhill spiral. And once you've gone down, it's actually very hard to climb out mm. of it. And sometimes you actually need that level of support to be able to do so, or someone to tell you, certainly someone independently to actually tell you uh, that you don't know to be able to get out. Because you can listen to family and friends, and they've got your best intentions again, but they're not experts in being able to do that. And um, But it, it, it is easy, and it's really hard to climb out of it. But the thing is, I'm not sure antidepressants is the solution for that half the time uh, I mean I went to a doctor and I think it was a stand-in doctor and I think she was probably even coming to the end of her career and there's no disrespect to her um, but when when I saw her you know she just said oh are you anxious with work and I said most business own owners go through a level of stress and anxiety in their own businesses it, it's part and parcel of actually being uh, being a business owner it's even part and parcel of being an employee when there's so much uncertainty going on and i think that's one of the causes for depression because the way the market landscape is actually changing there's a lot of uncertainty and that uncertainty will trigger something like depression and and the thing is well, not I, I was i, I was uh, i was off i was offered prozac but i was offered prozac on a, on um, on a very lim uh, you know just based on about three or four different facets of information and I mean I declined it because the thing is it's not a road once I've gone down that road again you start becoming reliant on it in that downhill spiral it's just even harder mm. to get out of Mind you, one of the side effects is reduced appetite <laughs> Well, it can be, but uh, but again, it, 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 look, it look, when we've said this before, it comes down to having a code of honour, and the code of honour is a set of rules you actually set for yourself. I mean, I showed you my code of honour this morning on my laptop, um, and, and there's certain disciplines that you actually got, and it's about becoming more disciplined, and it's easy not to be disciplined, but by having that structure, I mean, I've got my time planned out from the moment I wake up at 5 in the morning till about 8.30 at night, which is when I, when I actually stop work. Um, and I've, and, you know, and, and as you said yourself, my, my day is full. And I've got everything, and, I, and I've got a couple of free spaces in between there. I've got my family time, but I've structured it all. All right, and it's a level of one, it's discipline, and it's two, about using the resources and being resourceful enough to be able to actually get yourself out of that. Look, I, I can't, under, and we've talked about this, you know, like people who overeat. I can't understand how fat people, I'm sorry to say, are, uh, uh, if you call me fattest or whatever it is, can actually make excuses for being fat or actually can accept being fat or, or make excuses for being fat there isn't there isn't there isn't a good reason for that 
it it um, you know it it, it 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 impacts on your cognitive behaviour, impacts on your cognitive intelligence as well. Major sort cause of cancer. All right. So all the all, all these factors, you know, at the end of the day, it, it comes down to one thing. You, you know, exercise more and eat, and eat less and eat the right things. You know, and and all these people, have, you know, and there's hundreds of you know, a million things online. But don't forget what we t- talked about, which, which one, tells you what, what you should eat one, and what you shouldn't. One eat. theory in the epigenetics is that if you if you're not getting the grooming as a as a young child then you get more anxious and more likely to want to eat more. Well, there's, there's a thing. Um, I, I read a study about a couple of years ago um, which said that if one of your parents is fat, then your, your child has got a 50% chance of being overweight. If both parents are over, uh, fat or overweight, however, you, you know, however politically correct you want to put it, then there's a 75% chance that they're going to be overweight. Um, and the thing is, that comes down to what we've been saying on the last on the last podcast before this, that it comes down to your environment. Um, if you if you as a family sort of change the patterns in the household, and it's not easy, and you can't change those habits and patterns overnight, it takes time, and you do one thing at a time. And of course, that's why the government is introducing sugar tax because they're they're trying to reduce the sugar environment for us well it's interesting because um, coca-cola have announced um, no, actually not coca-cola there is we are consuming less sugar than we did so many years ago because and maybe it is a high level of awareness maybe it, 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 for a number of reasons um but not you know maybe people are thinking dry diet coke instead of full, full fat coke but in terms of sales of things like coca-cola and things like that they've actually gone down because in particularly the millennials i suppose aren't drinking coke like they used to they're into their fiji water and their and their things like that and um t- to be able to um because that's how because that's how the market has evolved now i, I don't drink much coke I, I probably used to at one point um but over a period of time you start weaning it out of your habits your 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 pattern you start changing that pattern little by little it's not easy for everyone and the thing is sometimes you actually need support but it's doable if you're willing if you're willing to put the effort you're willing to have a purpose for a bigger pic and you have a purpose and you actually have a bigger picture to be able to actually want to achieve that look i I used to be one person who who took you put your purpose in life and your vision in life probably quite um, I, I probably glossed over it but when you go quite deep into that sort of area and actually understand why are you here and why are you doing what you're doing and your vision for it then you'll actually, then you'll actually find that you're going to have a far clearer picture in what direction you're actually heading in and where you actually want to go does that, does that, does that make sense? Yeah, I, right. I I completely agree with that. And you and, not, and you got, and you can't do it alone. Sometimes, sometimes you need a counsellor. You know, I mean, everyone in the states pretty much has a shrink. I mean, it's a great great job to be in over there if you're any good. Well, you see that in a way, everyone needs some kind of mentor in today's society because we just don't have that. Whereas, if you if you I, what I've noticed with my extended family on the little Greek island is that. It is all extended family. You you know pretty much everyone there, but you don't know them to the same extent. So there'll be people you're familiar with, and you know that are safe to deal with, but you don't have a lot of lot to do with. And what I've noticed is that when sometimes when people have a problem, they link up with with someone who they're not particularly close to, and they start going for long walks together, and that that's a form of mentorship. They talk through problems. And we don't have that bond society, and and therefore, the the idea of therapy or mentorship is is something which uh, which is a fairly solid, useful idea to have. Uh, the thing is, mentorship in this country has become a has become a business, um, and I've always disapproved of that. I think it, you know, and that's why I, I think the word mentorship has been bar- or mentor has been bastardized. Well, one, I think it's very hard to mentor your own children. Um, you can give them advice, but I think you need but to that's actually why have you need an exter- extended family. You for have that. an external one, but but secondly, mentorship has become a business in terms of they use the word mentorship as you know 
oh, it's a high ticket value item that you get mentorship, like whether it's business mentorship or whatever, and you have to pay a lot of money for that. Whereas I think mentorship is actually a, a, is actually passing down your skill set and passing passing the baton onto somebody else um, and passing information, which is what used to happen in the you know Native American Indian tribes no, and that, even th- probably. But that's the only part of it. What's really crucial is self-awareness and objectivity and that's what talking with a mentor helps you because you 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 what you do is you project onto your mentor how you feel and your attitudes and you become aware of things you talk things through whereas in modern life we don't give ourselves a chance to sit and think we've just got our heads down